guys welcome back to my channel my name is abby if you haven't watched any of my videos before but this is a big video which i feel like is what i started making when i first started my channel a few months ago and then i've just been traveling a lot recently this summer has been jam-packed and i have been reading lots i just haven't been telling you guys what i've been reading and i want to share with you so this is like a what i'm reading kind of video sorry this jumper keeps slipping off so I'm going to tell you about what I've been reading, what I am reading, what I want to read, I think. <laughs> I'm going to start with two books I'm currently reading. I'm reading How To Be Bad by E. Lockhart. I read We Were Liars, I think that's what it's called. I read that last summer and I didn't really love it. It was a super hyped about book and it was okay but not great and this one i'd say would be below okay i'm not loving it and i'm about halfway through so i might stop reading it just because i've got so many great books that why waste my time reading a book i don't like but then i'm also halfway there so maybe i should keep reading it i'll let you know if i finish it or not but right now it's sitting at probably like a solid one out of five so yeah, maybe don't read that one. But then I've been reading this book for a while. So if you've seen this before, I'm sorry. I just haven't finished. I am really close to the end. This is The Mystery of the Parsi Lawyer by Shrabani Basu. I don't know if I pronounced the author's name right. You guys know the drill. I try my best, but I will put it on screen. This is a pretty great book. It's about Conan Doyle, who I've been loving his books, books about him everything surrounding Conan Doyle lately these last few months I feel like I've been reading a lot of works about him or by him and it's basically about a miscarriage of justice which he discovers it's a Parsi lawyer it's a non-fiction it features a lot of racism and like corruption in police officers this is really good this book also I think <laughs> needs a trigger warning it speaks about harm being done to animals, which is something I found quite sad. It does say in the book, like, warning animals are hurt in this story. I proceeded to read, which probably wasn't the brightest. But yeah, this is pretty good. It's just quite slow. I find non-fictions can be quite heavy. And I struggle to, like, sit down and, like, devour it. I never really read a non-fiction in the one day. So this is taking me at least a month. But it's fine, we're nearly there. This book I read last month, this is Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I believe this was one of Colleen Hoover's newest releases. I think it was released at the start of the year. I only just got around to reading it. I really liked it. It wasn't what I expected actually at all. It's about a single mum and her like fighting to try and get in touch with her daughter. Like, let me read you the blurb because I think this is really interesting. So as a young mother fights to earn a place in her child's life, but is there room for her? After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter, but the bridges Kenna burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward. I love this character so much. He's so wholesome. A local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kenna must find a way to absolve the mistakes of her past in order to build a figure out of hope and healing. So yeah, this is an interesting book. I haven't read any books with similar plots. It was actually really unique to me anyway and I really liked it I found a lot of the characters in this really lovable the ending was really sweet I really liked it and yeah it wasn't what I expected there's lots of like twists in this this book is Sunset by Jesse K and I believe I've spoken about this in a video but I can't stress you enough how much I love this book I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did again a really unique plot so this is about two sisters that go on holiday together they're really close and they have like a proper like sibling bond like they're able to like be them true selves around each other which includes like pointing out negatives in each other and stuff like that 
and this holiday just changes everything forever and it's narrated by one sister in particular and we just see her life before, during and after this holiday and yeah like how it affects her we find out what happened which is particularly tragic and yeah it's just a really really good book like really good like it gets to like some chapters barely anything is happening yeah it's so good and you see all these like twisted ways that different emotions can affect you and oh my gosh it's just so 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 good it's really sad though i've just read what sarah pasco reviewed it as and she said exquisite and raw and yeah it is it's really brutal it focuses a lot around grief and yeah it's it's really good i definitely read it and i wasn't excited to love it as much as i did i don't think i have to say anything else i think it's a five star this book oh this is like the complete opposite that one was like heartbreaking and so like devastating. This actually restores my faith in humanity and made me want to move to a little small town. So this is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. If you haven't read an Emily Henry book, which I hadn't until about two months ago, I highly recommend if you have the finances to allow you to do so, go buy one because wow she is really good at this so this is book lovers one summer two rivals a plot twist they didn't see coming hi cute i love books about people who love books because like i love books i don't know it makes it a bit more relatable i don't know okay so it says nora is a cutthroat literary agent at the top of her game her whole life is books charlie is an editor of a gift for creating bestsellers and he's nora's work nemesis so this is kind of like enemies to lovers they definitely don't like each other at the start and yeah, they like each other quite a lot by the end. Nora has been through enough breakups to know she's the one man date before finding their happily ever after. To prevent another dating dud, Nora's sister persuades her to swap her city desk for a month's holiday in Sunshine Falls. I found Nora's character really appealing because she's not like the cutesy girl that every boy falls in love with. She's really driven and she's like a girl boss. Like she is so cool she's so cool i'd love to be friends with her she's strong she's independent she's like not very well represented in other books and she feels unlovable lots of people break up with her they think she's heartless they think she doesn't have feelings she like doesn't cry and she, and she doesn't like make big deals out of being broken up with but like the girl has feelings obviously it hurts so yeah i thought it was nice having a book about someone like her because at the end of the day there's probably more people like Nora than there are like the perfect girl that like all boys want to be with do you know what I mean and it speaks a lot throughout the book about how she's like not the type of girl who like gets a happily ever after and like how four times she's been left for another girl and the other girl is like cute and wants to get married and have kids and have a family and she's like she can't compete against that. But then Charlie, Charlie doesn't want any of the cute girls. He doesn't care. Not that Nora's not cute, I'm sure she's beautiful. But you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't want a girl who's just gonna like giggle at everything he says. He wants someone strong like her. And yeah, they're pretty perfect for each other. But they are both quite damaged people. Their characters have a lot of depth, which they both start to understand and it's a very complex complicated and frustrating story but i loved it and i loved the ending it made me so so happy it was a beautiful read i think that emily henry creates characters that are both relatable but different she's no heroine he's no hero so can they take a page out of an entirely different book like it's like you're not supposed to love them because like they're the bad guys but they aren't bad guys i love them both so much yeah definitely read this i really liked it five out of five and if you have read this i would recommend you and me on vacation or beach read they were both five stars for me also i just love the people she creates and i hope she makes more books because i love her then carrie soto is back by taylor jenkins reed 
I picked this up before I went to Barcelona and I read it in like less than one day. I read like both these, I like read this book fully and then started the other book all within one day. And this is another one about a strong woman. Okay, so I'll give you a quick summary. So basically Carrie Soto is, if you've read, if you've read Malibu Rising, you'll recognize her character because Taylor Jenkins reads, creates like standalone novels, but some characters appear in different ones. It's quite cool, they're all like intertwined. But Carrie Soto is a tennis player. She has a single parent. Her dad raised her because her mum died. And he coaches her to become a tennis champion, which she does. She's got a really impressive career. And she goes the whole way through her childhood just playing tennis. She ends up dropping out of school. She doesn't go to college. She is just tennis, tennis, tennis. She breaks records. She does amazing. She's always winning. And then she has a knee injury. She continues to play for a bit and then she retires. And everyone thought that was her story. While she was playing tennis, she wasn't the most popular from viewers. Obviously, people liked when she was winning because, like, you always want to support the winner. But she was labeled the battle axe and then later on the bitch because she was so desperate to win that she would do whatever it took. And like she didn't become friends with her opponents because like it's harder to beat someone if you're friends with them. She was very logical but people didn't really like that about her. So her like strength and drive and determination were all kind of held against her throughout her like winnings which seems a little bit silly to me. And then she became more well liked after she retired and started doing like commercials and like advertising shoes because she was like less of a threat. So I think like an underlying theme was that like when women are less threatening they're more well liked by other women and men and I found it really interesting because throughout this book there's first person narrative from Carrie, there's some narration like an outsider perspective but there's also these like snippets of like magazine articles, news reports and like press conferences and what these other reporters are saying to each other about her and that's when she gets called a bitch which I don't think she is I think she's a really lovely character and I genuinely think like little girls should be reading this book because she's such a role model like I don't get what the issue was and like even the ending of this book it has such a nice message and yeah this is a really good book like I really like it and I don't know how I went from reading so many books where like obviously there's like girls in them but like it's not like these like strong powerful women that are in this book and book clubbers. I just thought it was really inspiring if I'm honest. I think Carrie Soto is pretty badass so yeah I would definitely recommend this. I think I gave this five stars. It was really good. Okay so my next book is a book I haven't actually read yet but I've seen this going around for so long. This is Eleanor Oliphant is Olifad, Olifad, I don't know. It's completely fine by Gail Honeyman. We can read the blurb together because I didn't actually read the blurb when I bought this because I just like assumed it was good. I got this from Oxfam and it says it has gifted. So that's lovely. This cost me £3.49 in case you wondered. Elder Olifad leads a simple life. She wears the same clothes to work every day, eats the same meal deal for lunch every day and buys the same two bottles of vodka to drink every weekend. Eleanor Oliphant is happy. Nothing is missing from her carefully timetabled existence, except sometimes everything. So that sounds sad. I don't know what's going to happen in this. Apparently it was winner of the British Book Awards Book of the Year. Funny, touching and unpredictable. I'm excited to read that. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, we're down to all books that I'm excited to read. This is The Devils You Know, Encounters in Forensic Psychiatry by Dr. Gwen Adshed and Eileen Horn. I again bought this without reading the blurb. So this says Dr. Gwen Adshed is one of Britain's leading forensic psychiatrists. She treats serial killers, arsonists, stalkers and other individuals who are usually labelled monsters. Whatever their crime, she listens to their stories and helps them to better understand their terrible acts of violence. In The Devil You Know, Adshed invites the reader to step with her into the treatment room to meet 12 patients and presents a powerful case for rehabilitation over revenge, compassion over condemnation and empathy over fear. An unmissable book. Well, that sounds exciting to me. Yeah, I feel like this book's going to be really interesting. 
especially because it's about like serial killers and stalkers and like getting inside their brain when i'm older i kind of want to get into like criminal defense law so i think this could be interesting i'll let you know next i've got a few classics so i got train spotting i've never actually seen the movie but i know this is like really popular i don't know if the book's that popular but i recognize the blurb or i think it's like a phrase from the book it's like choose us choose life choose mortgage payments choose washing machines choose cars choose and then like a load of other stuff and then which a lot of it contains swear words so i'm not going to say that on the internet and then choose life I think I might find this interesting. I'm definitely going to read it. I feel like it's like a classic or like a modern classic. And then I got The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which I'm really excited to read. It looks like quite a short classic, so I think this should be easy. And then I got George Orwell's 1984 because I've been seeing this all over TikTok and I'm really excited to read it. I haven't read many classics, but that's something I'm aiming to do more this year. So yeah, that's exciting. The last book that I'm planning on reading is Black Buck by Matteo Ascaripor and I just thought this would be really interesting. I thought the cover was really cool so I picked it up and then I read the blurb and it was meet Darren, an unambitious 22 year old living with his mother and working at Starbucks. All that changes when a chance encounter with Brett Daniels, a silver tongued CEO of New York City's hottest tech startup, results in Darren joining Rhett's elite sales team. I just thought it was quite interesting if I'm honest. I love books set in New York I just wanted to pick this up. The blurb is a little bit longer, but yeah, I think it seemed pretty cool. A lot of it's saying it's like funny and it has a dark comic energy. That sounds good to me. I feel like all the books I've like got coming up are quite different. I love a bit of variety. So yeah, that is what I've been reading, what I am reading, what I'm away to read. I hope you found that interesting. <laughs> Thank you for watching and sorry I've not been the most consistent lately but I have good videos coming, I promise. I'm like halfway through like four different videos so yeah, just be patient.